One of the areas in which Nigeria's tech industry has been incredibly forward is in fintech and banking. Over the last two decades, we've built one of the most robust and innovative banking industries in the world, frequently innovating in areas where the rest of the world actually hasn't already done. So for instance, we've been able to do peer-to-peer -peer transfers in a way that most Western markets still can't from their banks. Today, we're going to talk about the changing face of banking, how it's affecting you, and what's coming next. We have some incredible guests who have been pioneers and participants in this change and are working at some of the most interesting companies changing the face of banking in Nigeria. Welcome to Tech Into the Future, and this is about the changing face of banking. Today we have two guests from the digital banking and fintech space. Uzama Dozier was the last group managing director for Diamond Bank and is now the CEO and founder of Sparkle Bank. And we also have with us Didi Uwamakwen, who is the VP for MoneyPoint, which I'm sure you have probably seen in the last store that you went to. Um, this is our show today. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Tech Into the Future. Joining us today is Uzoma Dozier. He is the founder and CEO of Sparkle, a digital bank. Welcome to the show, Uzoma. Thank you for having me, guys. Fantastic. All right, so let's get to it. You run a digital bank. What does that mean? Okay, so uh, quickly, digital is, for, for me is uh, paperless, cashless, and uh, after COVID, uh, contactless. So from a digital bank perspective, it is about providing providing services to people who do, do not want to pay with paper, don't want to pay with cash, and really as we go into the contactless payment system, that's actually what they actually want. And the reason for that is, is, is numerous. And I think digital means, I mean, the, the raw material for digital is data. So the more data you can capture, the more information you can generate to make decisions financial and lifestyle and that's and, and I think that's that's where we're going with that's what that, that's what the future of digital is. Fantastic. Thank you. So okay, so then let's talk about serving customers. Um, what is different in the way um, a Sparkle will serve uh, their customers compared to a traditional bank, say like a GTB? Okay, from I think from a layman's and I will speak in layman's Yes, please. <laughs> Minimum disruption. I don't have to go anywhere. Right? Okay. I choose when I decide to do stuff, right? I actually am in control. Mm. So we put the control in hand, hand of people. So we're excited about open banking. But open banking means that for the first time, the data that banks have kept for you and that you've used, so that if you've been banking with someone for 10 years or so, yeah. they own the data. But now they're going to choose how that data is used, whether you want it, and, and give permission to people to use it to make decisions about how to serve you. So, so to be, and then for us, it's also how, so it's giving me your data, it's your permission, mm -hmm. and then giving you back information. And, it's simple, and I think a simple analogy is, if you look at Spotify, at the end of the year, now everyone's excited about Spotify rap. So yeah. This is Spotify rap. It is yeah. like, taking your data, exactly. and giving me information about what kind of music you like, what your friends like, and introducing you to more stuff. And so, like this year on Sparkle, that's exactly what we did. We took, we, uh, the, uh, I think last week, we uh, showed people what, how, what, how they spend their money, right? What they do, which is an insight to that. So, I mean, I think for me, moving money, everybody can do that, but what you do with the data, right? right? How you, you give back that data, the sense of information to your customer, is what you could be a defining factor of the future. Fantastic. Um, okay, so that's interesting. I think that's innovation on the customer side. Yes. What are the other areas in which you're innovating within the business? How else are you different than a traditional bank? Right. No, I think the um, the um, first of all is automation. So, like automation is very essential for the digital bank. So mm. everybody has automated their phone. Whether you're a traditional bank, to like 
and that through mobile. Okay. So that happens on the back end. How are you using new technology to do that? That's are you accusing your customer, your competitors are still using pen and paper? <laughs> to manage later. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you, know, you know, I will tell you, like, like when I was in Diamond Bank, like, was, first of all, we were the only paperless organization in Nigeria, not the only bank. Well, uh, today, in Sparkle, following that tradition, we're still paperless, right? Okay. Um, so, on the, on the back end side, on the back end side, because you're dealing with not your own system, but different types of systems, right? You're going to have the consideration issue. So the, the, the fact that the customer uh, transfers money from Sparkle to another bank means that if there's a service failure through the process, there's going to be, there's going to be some reconsideration. Mm -hmm. What normally happens here is you see people think, so what was introduced was robotic post automation when we started that. So robots actually do what humans are doing. We're doing the same thing. We're checking this money has gone, and then we are actually uh, moving um, numbers to different ledgers and then saying yes or no. I feel like you yeah. shouldn't let NLC hear this thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just about to do that. Unfortunately, unfortunately that's the new, that's the world. That's the world. NLC have to get aut automate there. <laughs> okay, this is the short of And you have to do automation. You have to do that because. I mean, like, we are very lean team. Mm. Right? We're lean team with tens of thousands of customers who might be in different time zones. So just because you are, you are open your account in Lagos doesn't mean that you might not be in China, in Japan. And so when there's a problem, mm. from 2, three o'clock in the morning in, Lag in, uh, in Lagos to 5, 8 a.m. in uh, whatever country you are. So we have to make sure that we can serve you at any time of the day without giving too much, right? And from a process perspective, Perspective. You know, anyone will tell you that robots make less errors than humans. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. They do 110,000 times more processing than one person can do. They're 24/7. But I think most. I think for us, what we found was key was the data that we capture. So if you think thousands of transactions, we're capturing the data when it was done, and that gives you insight on how to continue to improve your operational efficiency. On the other side, so that's robotic post automation, and there are quite a few that. Generative AI. I mean, for mm -hmm. that's a real game changer internally and externally, right? Internally, from the fact of, so this is, I mean, like, so if I use myself as a simple example, I wake up in the morning, I want to look at, I have a few dashboards, right? A few yeah. dashboards to go to, and that could take me 20, 30, 40 minutes. So, like, it's, and so I wake up in the morning, like, and I say, Alexa, what's the weather today? And Alexa tells me. Right. So, this time next year, I want to be asking Indy, who, who is that chatbot? Indy, what happened yesterday? And then I would have prompted him to tell me what happened in terms of the top five customers, what the operational issues were, what the macroeconomic stuff are, and maybe tell me based on what you know about Sparkle, what who should I be talking to today in the organization to help with the stuff. And so this is this is your vision of the future. This is my vision of next year. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this is the future. Mm -hmm. No, I think I mean it's important uh, because we are talking about how AI yeah. is going to change things. Okay. And yeah. I think that's a nice kind of capsule mm -hmm. of how you see it yeah. changing things. Um, so if I were to ask you now, because, so that's the, the back end, and it's actually very good to know because, again, how would we know unless we're, we're told? Like, and the truth of the matter is that it's not just this digital bank, right? There's so many other digital banks, so this is also a differentiator amongst all the other digital banks. But now for the user, the question is, if you don't have branches all over the place, right, how do we know to trust you? How can we trust Sparkle? If I want to hold your shirt. <laughs> if I'm anything sure. happens, who do I come looking for? You know, I think, in fact, you know, like, I think I, I, I said once, first of all, you have to understand the psychology before you apply the technology. Indeed. So yeah. we're living, for the first time, we're living in a world where you have about five generations, right? Mm -hmm. Five generations. Baby mm -hmm. boomers, Gen X, um, millennials, millennials, Gen Z, and even Gen Alpha. Now. Yes, right. yes, yes. In our generation, on the father's generation, Information was power. We didn't need to share information. It was assets by the way. Yes. We would like to collect assets. We didn't want to collect. So, you're going to find fewer people who have, I mean, like people who have trust they want to go to your bank. That's what they used to, that's what they know. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And there's little we can do to change that. That's a, that is a reality. But now, as the world changes, so like, for example, my father has a curse, so he has minions like myself who do his bidding. People, Gen X don't have a choice because the world is changing. When you travel, when you go to New York, when you have to queue, nobody wants to ask you. So you have to ask them. Right? So there's, there's, there's no choice. There's no, there's no choice there. For my son and my daughter, 
as far as we're concerned, binding is in the form. If you tell them to go to the physical location, they don't have to go to the staff. So the definition of trust is completely different mm. from our definition. Our definition of trust is basic as a C, right? It must be physical. For, for digital natives and aliens and, and people who were born in that system, it's about processes, real, reliability. Trust is not about I know you from your wife. Trust is about this is going to happen when I press this. Right? Yeah. And this is this is actually interesting. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah, that. Yes. Yeah. This is going to happen when, when I, I press this, this. When I press it. So I'm okay. used to that, yeah. if I click this on my iPhone, this That's happens. Clear on my Samsung, that happens. So, 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 yeah. so as a bank, the the predictability of yes, that's the word. is where trust is built. I like that. That's and, really and important. And in reality, in Nigeria, people, I mean, like when you hear about this big bank issues in the bank and everything, it is only affects a certain number of customers. Like the traditional bank that has 10 million customers. The co- their customers in the urban area, in the farm area, they don't understand what's going on. Well, their own trust is that when I go to this bank, it's going to be like a Because by the process, the process says open at 8, and it closes at five. Oh, the, my money. Yeah, my money yeah. The day it doesn't cl- open, right? <laughs> and then that process is broken. So it's actually not about people who assets, it's about the process, process that you have told me and the promises that you have made to me. Okay. I want to jump into regulation. Yeah. Um, what kind of license or licenses does Sparkle hold? Microfinance license. Microfinance. Yes. Does that suffice for your activities? Today, yes, the startup. Tomorrow, definitely not. Because I think Sparkle, I mean, and I think sometimes people just think, you know, people say fintech. And I mm. tell people, I'm not a fintech, I'm a bank, I'm licensed, right? So okay. the difference, that means that the money is safe. You know, so wait, what is the difference between a fintech and a bank? Well, if a bank is regulated, has, has high regulatory standards, high documentation, governance requirements, and management, right? Okay. And then also, your deposit, you can take deposits. Your deposit are uh, insured by NDIC. Right. So that is one. But the other, there are different types of licenses. If you have a, I do not know all of them, so if you have a mobile money license, I believe that it is. I'm not sure if it's different. I don't want to be curious to know. There's no mobile money, there is payment, PSP, I don't think. So allowed. you're saying you can be a fintech without being a bank? Yes. And it means you can do That's whatever right. transaction your license allows you. Exactly. But you're a bank I'm a because bank. you are yeah, exactly. NDIC insured, yeah, exactly. you are, yeah. okay. And, 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 you're, and, and you're regulated that, by and that's CBN. The, and that's the level of trust that you must sell to people. So why mm. do you trust me? Because I've, I have chosen to get a higher license and put myself under higher scrutiny. Okay. So still on regulation. Yes. You said um, you have a microfinance bank license, but it will not be sufficient as no. you grow yes. bigger. Yes. But if we so should, what needs to change, regulation wise? I believe the li- license needs to change. Needs to be okay. okay. Why it needs to be looked at is because technology has changed everything. Okay. Right? So like you have policies that. Were introduced introduced uh, way before. Tech. In fact, in the last five years, we've seen an advance in technology. People are doing people are doing what banks were doing with different financial yeah. and non-financial licenses. But you know, in the end, and the central bank uh, regulator on the regulatory role is to protect the, the system, but also financial system stability, and to also to grow the market in response to what is happening. Now, if we all we all know that digital is the future that's going to give you competitive advantage on a national scale. We must look at policies that govern those. And one is okay. Is it because to tell you truth, why do why do people need microfinance license? In fact that a lot of people are using microfinance license, would that be only appropriate license for the capital return perspective mm-hmm. that they can this is, that they can use? But it also inhibits us from doing things like cross border transactions. Nigeria is a country that has uh-huh. millions of uh, people in diaspora that generate 30, over 30 billion in, um, in uh, money is coming in and, and, and at a high cost to them. What is those barriers to their actually get? We actually see more. And so for us, I mean, like, Sparkle is a digital bank for the affluent and startup with people are starting their small business. And so for us to achieve that, we need to be able to provide premium services that can compete with what traditional banks do. We need a, we need a, a license. Yeah, we need an appropriate license. Right. That's, that's what I said, the appropriate so a license. Digital bank license yeah, digital or something bank like that. Or appro- yeah, yeah. Or if we have no choice, go for a bigger license. Because in the end, too, for us... So theoretically, you could end up with a standard commercial bank, commercial bank exactly. license. Yes, yeah, we would have to do that because it's also... Because as you said earlier, how do you trust, right? Mm. You trust because actually put more money in my business. I have to. 
committed to it. That's what it was about. From an investor and not to a stakeholder perspective. Let me ask you a related question. How big is Sparkle in this case? So from customers, about 200,000 customers. Oh, I don't want to even go into like 200,000 customers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go to those numbers, eh? 200, about 200,000 customers, uh, 220 million small businesses. But I think for us, it's not a numbers game because there's also a cost to save Now, I don't want mm. to end up with 5 million customers and the same country and spending money to save Sorry. Mm, right. right. I don't want to, like, and I also want to make sure I'm saving the right kind of people as well. And so, and, and we can do that at a smaller scale. We can be part of a smaller scale because we've invested in the right technology. To we serve. started lean. And so, like, we are actually thinking, so, like, we are very, very religious about our cost was different. So, we can afford to do that. Our cost of funds are low, so we can even lend at prices that are reasonable, reasonable. For, to the market, to mm. the, the, the segment that we are for, that we want to serve. So tell us, Uzama, um, what lessons have you learned running a commercial bank that um, uh, gives you insight to how you now run a digital bank? Well, that's a very interesting question. And uh, it's, it's actually been interesting because, I mean, 90, I would say 80% of the, the banking that I, I, I learned, right? <laughs> but, I mean, but, but, I mean, banking, I mean, banking has been developed to the age, and I think there's some demands that will never change. Right. Fair enough. Um, and so I, I like to like use an analogy for like we're building a skyscraper. Mm. And when you start building a skyscraper, you have to build it down first before you build it. And so you're building a foundation that can take ten, tens of floors. Yes. And so like today, I would say that we're still building. So not many people know about Sparkle and what we do and why we're different from everybody else. Now, and so so it's about corporate governance, right? It's about getting those principles of the understanding who your stakeholders are. Um, uh, so, understanding that you are a risk manager, you're making money from this. That's what you And so, to do that, you must push the framework, this management framework, from day one. Whereas, even before you start, you start like, you put those principles of what you're supposed to do. To help us understand what is the risk of the market, what is the risk of the market, and how do you even use technology to, um, so risk is risk. How, how do you use technology to uh, reduce bad risk? Mm -hmm. Is a good risk. So operational risk is, uh, simple analogy, operational risk is bad. That's people, right? Right. And, and that's people, and there are many, it's for people. Exactly. Financial risk is where you make money, right? The more risk, the more return. And mm -hmm. so for us, and just to use technology. The more risk, the more danger. The more danger, the, mean, yeah, the more risk. So like, I'll tell you, so simple, simple example, the more you make things secure, the more risk that you can take. So it's tough today. People are going 120, 150 kilometers per hour. They have seat belts. So they, as before, they were dying, they were going at 50 kilometers per hour. Mm. So because of technology and because of the way things are done, people are now, you can take more risk. Come on, right? That's not a problem. Yes, okay. exactly. So for us, and so what does that translate to? It means that the less people I have in my business, the less people that are in the process of taking decisions, yeah. right, is faster, right? There's less risk of human bias. So if you take Lenny, for example, if we say that we're data driven, data driven is important. Yeah. It means that we're taking that operational risk out of decision making at the pace of the So it means that financial risk means that not that I'm taking bigger risk, it means that now I need to go down the risk. Right? Okay. You mentioned open banking a few times in yeah. yes. this interview. Yeah. What does it mean? And where is it kind of in the policy process as far as you know? Okay, open, so open bank. Open is about sharing information, right? And sharing information um, uh, within certain standards to protect the system and what is more important to the customer. But in the end, it just gives the customer power to write over their, 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 their data, which is their, which is their begin to their asset. And a simple example, as I said, is that if I've been banking with Sparkle for the last five years, right? And then I want to borrow money for Carbon. Let me take carbon for example. Exam. I don't know from you why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather use them than anybody else. <laughs> yeah. that, 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 I want to use carbon for example. Carbon would I would give carbon permission. Or I, so yeah, my person will give carbon permission to take my data to make, to make a decision. Before what would, would, would happen is that any other bank would say, okay, you know, you have to bank with us for three, three months before we give you the video. Only data they have. I think what is more exciting about it is that 
even back in the days of our financial speaking days, of our also non financial as well. So, mm. what if you go access money and you can tell the government data? What you just like from a little bit? So, you now have a bigger universe. And so, yeah, and I, I think to extend beyond that. Okay. So when you extend beyond that, it now, it's also about, and it's actually, it will actually help society as well. Because yeah. That becomes a credit. Exactly. What we knew as credit before was only financial. What we knew about social credit. How, what is the standard in society? Right. Okay. Utopia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to that future. What else excites you about 2024? I think the market. I think with, so what excites me is about how we can grow this market. Mm. And I, I think it's built on trust. So I'm seeing some legislation that we're liking, like, mm. like enhanced BBN and like looking to people the BBN and their names. And I believe that. We're going to look at um, uh, the licensing right, to some extent this year. But I think what I think what I think what I'm what what, what we are driving at because I'm CEO of the um, I'm the I'm the CEO of the fintech Nigeria. What we're actually driving is fighting fighting cyber crime. Right. So mm, we're, right we're building a platform that's going to provide information to the participants, right, to reduce or deter. Fraud in this, what fraud does is actually stop, reduces trust and stops um, um, people adopting digital, Indeed. adopting the new year back. So that's what I'm looking at. Very simple, very basic, but very necessary. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Uzama, for being here. My takeaway is um, paperless, contactless, cashless. Um, uh, there were a lot of nuggets about open, open banking. And we look forward to having you uh, here again next year. And then you will tell us that you're able to say to Indy what happened in, uh, in Sparkle <laughs> last year. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much. We're going to take a break now. And we'll be back with our second guest shortly.